We are launching a German edition of the Huffington Post because we obviously believe that the German market is a very important market, uh, not only from a media perspective, but also from a geopolitical perspective. Uh, Germany is obviously uh, you know, a very important uh, component of, uh, of EU and what's going to happen uh, with EU. So, so as we, HuffPost is a side that is very uh, focused on politics and news uh, and, and also focused on, on given, giving people a voice, having people participating. Uh, we feel that it, it, it is really urgent for us to uh, come to Germany and, and, and play a role uh, and, and actually having a more engaged conversation with the Germans, not only with the elite about what's going on, but also uh, with the people, uh, getting the participation, getting them here in their voices. Uh, we, we feel that is uh, very important and we feel there is, uh, there is um, a need for that in, in the German market and, uh, and, and that's why we, from a business perspective, uh, feel that uh, there's an urge for us to, to do it. At the same time, uh, you know, more commercially, uh, we've already launched in a number of European markets. Uh, Germany is the last one of the big five. We've, we've launched in the UK, we've launched in France, we've launched in Spain, we've launched in Italy. Um, and, and from a commercial perspective, we really need Germany to complete the big five. Uh, because when you look at Europe from an advertising perspective, the big five basically constitute 75-80% of, of the online advertising spend going on in Europe. Uh, and if we want to be relevant to international advertisers, then of course from that perspective, we can't, uh, we can't uh, not be in, in, in Germany. So the way we uh, roll out Huffington Post is uh, really goes back to when uh, when AOL uh, acquired Huffington Post in uh, in 2011, the beginning of 2011. The idea was always to try to kind of test whether the HuffPost model could travel and work outside of the U.S. Obviously, it's been hugely successful in the U.S. Um, the first stages to kind of test the model was really to take the model and, and put it into Canada and UK. The reason for testing out those markets first was really those markets are English speaking and AOL had a strong presence in those markets so it was easy to kind of bring it to the market and test it. There was people on the ground. Uh, it was easy to get it, get it, get it off the ground uh, with, the, with the help of, of the AOL resources. Um, we really use that as, uh, as a test and to really understand what is it that, that works well with the model, what is it we have to factor in when we kind of bring the model to a new market. And what we learned was that you know, it is really important to have uh, and to work with a trustworthy brand in, in the local market. It is important uh, to have uh, a partner that has uh, a strong network, that have an existing organization that we can leverage, that already understand uh, the online sales routines of that market and have a sales force, force there so we don't have to focus on that. Um, so we really took those learnings and applied that to our partnership uh, program and, and, and that's really what we've been rolling out in, in all the partner markets we've gone into. Uh, because in France, in Italy, in Spain, in Germany, AOL at this point in time doesn't really have a presence and, and we need to kind of work with someone that is uh, you know, a well-known brand and, and obviously that is the reason why we're decided here in Germany to work with Bird and to more focus. Another reason for us to kind of choose uh, to more focus on Berder as a partner uh, when we look at Germany, there, there was a lot of interest in, 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 in taking the HuffPost model into Germany from other publishers as well. But, but to more focus to us uh, was standing out for a number of reasons. One of them being that I think when I look at the German market, they're one of the publishing houses that has done the transition into online, into digital best. I, I, I think uh, when I look at the portfolio and I look at the results that uh, has been created in this group, uh, they're impressive. Uh, and, and we obviously, uh, you know, that is where we excel. So we like to work with like-minded. We like to work with people that we think understand where this is going uh, and are looking at things the same way as we are. So that's an important point. Another point is that it's also about you know, as we, as we work with partners, it's also about working with partners that really strategically wants to do this. And we need to feel that in the conversation. We need to feel that in the involvement. And from a very early stage, uh, both uh, Mr. Berder, but also Dr. Carlin, and of course, Christoph Schuh and the whole Tomorrow Focus team has been very engaged in conversation, have really shown us that they want to do this. Uh, and, and, and that 
you know, is, is critical uh, because the brand is obviously, you know, super important for us and, and we can't, we only have one chance and, and we need to make sure we do it with the right partner. So the last thing is not only the involvement, but then also the chemistry, of course, that, that you know, uh, we work with people that we, that we like and respect and, and, and we feel that we can work with for many years to come. And, and that's what we feel when, when we're uh, with the Tomorrow Focus and the Berta people. There is already uh, an existing collaboration and it's something that will only increase over time. A month ago we actually had our first international summit where all our edition was gathered in London to share best practices and learnings and, and, and that's one of the uh, wonderful things about this and also an important thing when we bring in a partner. We want them to come in and contribute and, and to be part of the conversation just like we want our readers to be part of the conversation. We don't want a partner that is not interested in sharing kind of when they have best practices, when they've found out things that works for them. We want them to share them with, with the other partners uh, because only that way we're going to be as strong as we ca can be as a network. Uh, so that, that's one of the things. Another thing is um, as we grow the network we're also going to be stronger from a product perspective here in Germany but also in other markets because uh, when we have a French election we have a local edition that has people on the ground that will interview the candidates, that will talk about politics that is relevant and that will be relevant uh, to the German people here and we will be able to take those things and bring them to the, uh, to the German readers. We, we, you know, the same in, in Rome when we, had, when we had the new Pope coming in, uh, we had people on the ground and, and, and covering it at length with, with uh, deep reports uh, and, and obviously that is something that works uh, very well and is relevant to all our international editions. So sharing uh, is a key component. We really want the network effect to be strong and we really want that to be a value add and, and a way to improve the, the quality of our overall product. I'm tasked with a great job. I, I, I need to build this into a global media brand. And, and uh, you know, if you want to be global, then, uh, then there's quite a few other markets you need to cover off. So, uh, so before Germany, actually, May 7th, we are launching Japan. Uh, then the plan is to, uh, to launch an edition in uh, North Africa, uh, in the Maghreb region. Um, that will probably happen over the summer. Uh, then uh, in September, October, uh, around the German election, we hope to be able to launch uh, a version here in Germany. And, and then in October, uh, we are launching uh, in Brazil. Uh, beginning of next year, uh, we will launch in uh, South Korea and, and we will launch in India. Uh, and we hope we will be in, in a position to launch in, in Mexico and Russia in the middle or back end of next year. So as I said, we're basically going to take this from now, right now we are an international business. Within the next uh, you know, 12, 18 months, we're going to be a truly global business with presences in, uh, in up to 15 uh, different markets. Uh, and, and, and that's really uh, the plan that, uh, that we have, which is quite aggressive. Uh, but, but that's what we feel we need to do if we want to be a global media player. And if we want to take advantage of our first mover advantage.